racing out on Zwift. We got handicap racing on the Innsbruck ring this week. We're out for three laps in the women's race. You can see all the categories that are going to be racing against each other today with different head starts for each one of the categories based on their ability level that you can see in their watts per kilogram underneath each one of their jerseys there. Three minutes to the C's, five to the B's, and seven to the A's on the Innsbruck ring. We're going to be out here, hit the leg snapper three times at the main climb is going to be out on course. Women's race at 7 p.m. GMT and the open race at 7.45 p.m. GMT. That's about 45 minutes. The D category is out on course. My name is Nathan Guerra. I'm going to be your host and commentator for the day out here for both of the races. Let's go ahead and jump right on into some of the action here in just a moment. A uh, little bit of explanation real quickly of what this is. Land Chop is uh, handicap race meaning that all the subgroups A, B, C, and D set off at different times. The winner is the first rider across the line regardless of the subgroup. The series is run in partnership with Black Sheep, a cycling apparel uh, company based out of Brisbane, Australia. And we did this series based on some awesome feedback from the community uh, with the last two years doing chop racing with mainly uh, the Southern Hemisphere. Now we've got it for the Seventh Hemisphere, Europe, as well as the Americas. The American uh, races, uh, North American races that are going on at 7 p.m. EDT at 7.45 p.m. EDT will not be broadcast, but you can jump on those later tonight. Look at the C category. Joining me for cold commentary is going to be Alex Rasmussen, for, uh, former world multi-time world champion out on the track, as well as avid Swifter for the Danish bike riders in the community. Alex, welcome to the program. Excited to watch some chop racing here as the seas are jumping out on course. Thank you very much, Nathan. It's, it's a pleasure to be here again after last night's stream and watching some lamb chop races here. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. I'm excited to see the kind of, uh, what you know, the kind of talent that's going to be out here, not only in the elite A categories, but as well as all of the different categories racing against each other. One of the things we really like to highlight in the community racing is the fact that in the Lamb Chop series, each one of the categories can win. And regardless of your ability level out there, regardless of what kind of uh, efforts that you can put out in uh, the race and in the game, you are able to take down the win out there. And we are, uh, it looks like looking at the C category, no, excuse me, D category here now, as they've gotten out of course. The T Stump, it looks like here, 27 riders. Oh, excuse me, it's actually the C category that we're looking at here, as Stump is hammered away out of Germany here. 19th place right now, 27 riders in that category. Alex, you're familiar with uh, Zwift Racing and how important the pack is and it working together um, and the kind of speeds a larger group of riders uh, can attain together. I mean, there is a little bit of advantage depending on how many riders you get into your category. Definitely. It's it's all about being a big group and having a lot of people that are willing and able to work together. So the bigger the group, the bigger advantage you have. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we're looking here now at T-Stump here as well as McCoy from TFC. Barrett's here from HDLR. King there, it looks like as well. Uh, about five seconds up here. They're back in 19th place, so it looks like already a little bit of a gap needs to be shut down like immediately here if they're going to be involved in the race still and that's one thing in chop racing i think that sometimes people not always get the right idea with when it comes to these starts look at this gap already opening up it's not going to actually benefit the racers here too much in the c category now as we jump into the b category we'll see if they keep things together a little bit better because alex i think when the race starts off too fast in almost a team time trial you can uh, you can kind of ruin the race for the rest of your category. You definitely can, and also you gotta watch out for um, for the small hill on the Innsbruck ring, the leg snapper. Uh, you want to keep it together. You want to keep the heart rate low going into that, and hopefully stay together as a group. Get over it with as many people as possible, so you can keep working together and uh, keep that advantage. Yeah, for sure, exactly, and the the. It's going to be all about increasing that, increasing the advantage as much as they possibly can in the B category, and the C category, and the D category, because they're going to have a hard charging A category, really coming on as fast as they possibly can. And looking at the talent that is in the A category, it's not a lot of riders, but we're seeing some of the stronger riders. Team Turbo's out there in the A category. We're seeing with uh, Charlotte Backus as well as Olivia Barrow signed up. 
Vicky Nealon, currently sitting second overall as of yesterday in the Hino Cup on Wednesdays, one of the big community races that's out there. So be watching out for them. Now we are seeing the BRT Hellcats rider right now hammered away and uh, coming out of Australia. Lots of early mornings here, it looks like here for some of these Australian flags. You know, it, it obviously an extremely popular race for uh, the Southern Hemisphere if they're getting up this early to jump into these races. So good to see as it is going to be uh, Cox here coming out of Australia, leading things out with, uh, and Dowling making her way toward the front now. It's gonna be as well as the Revo rider there coming from Rio Deal. Uh, and hammering away toward the front now. It looks like 3.7 watts per kilogram. Now, if you're used to watching Swift Racing and you're like, what's going on with the uh, each one of these categories? And you're like, okay, what's the difference between the watts per kilogram? You can see at the bottom of the screen there exactly what kind of watts per kilogram that excuse me, what kind of gaps that they have and why they're there for the kind of watts per kilogram that each one of the categories can hold for their FTP. That's how these categories are being decided. What kind of FTP that you have, functional threshold power. And for the D category, it's gonna be between uh, zero and 2.5 watts per kilogram for your functional threshold power. How many watts per kilogram can you hold for one hour straight? In the C category, it's going to be between 2.5 and 3.2. In the B category, then it's going to be 3.2 to 4.0, and, and it's going to be 4.0 or higher in the A's. And, uh, and so now we can see here with the B's now, the bottom of the screen, it will show you what the time gaps are. That's going to be updated in just a moment as the A's get out. There it is. They got a seven minute head start to close down to that D category to take the win out here. It's only going to be, uh, it's going to be three laps to work with. So not a whole lot of distance, a lot of time, Alex, to work with here. And it's gonna have to be an all out effort as we're seeing back at the front there from Turbo. Yeah, and also such a small group in the A, that's one of the thing, big advantages for, for the B category is that they have quite a big group to work together with. Uh, so the A group really needs to stick together with the, the numbers they have if they wanna be able to catch the A and the Cs, or the B and the Cs, sorry. Yeah. And I I'd have to agree with you 100% there. The B and the C category, I'm seeing the, the largest numbers rise. I think we're seeing somewhere close to 30. 27 riders you see in the C category here in the black uh, the black kit right here. The B category, we're looking at 21 riders here. So a lot of riders working together, a lot more matches to burn. And, you know, speaking of team time trial, you're, you're really familiar, I would think, with team time trialing and, and working together with a group in order to get the highest speeds as you possibly can. It's really about burning matches at the front, not reserving, I would think. Exactly. It's about sacrificing yourself for the group. And uh, when you hit the front, you want to keep the power on as long as possible to 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 keep the pace as high. And then just uh, when you get a break and you come down in the pack, you want you just want to relax. You want to get that heart rate down, take some deep breath and then be ready to go back to the front when you feel ready for it. Yeah, I think the a lot of times inexperienced riders, riders that might not know how to ride a time trial, they reserve too much when they go to the front end of the of the pack. It's all about the highest speeds you can possibly attain to try and close down those gaps, actually. So at 250, 260 watts now, 160 beats per minute currently coming from Annabelle Cox here from the BRT team. BRT showing up out there. She's also got Jessica Hamilton out there with her, uh, one of the top ranked women out there in the B category uh, for the BRT team. So they're gonna be working together for this D category to bring things back. 216 is the gap now, 411, uh, 216 for the C's, 411, 413 now for the B's. Already bringing back close to a minute actually, so D category is gonna have to work it out for them. You know, in the D category, I believe uh, the Innsbruck, uh, on this Innsbruck ring, that leg snapper is going to make things very difficult. I mean, the reality of the watts per kilogram that are gonna be needed to climb up and over the top here. We're looking here at the C category. We'll see if we can jump in with the Ds here in just a moment, but uh, they're heading toward the leg snapper. The Ds are just about to make the climb here, and I think they're coming up over the top. Um, and you can, watts per kilogram you can also see really that the, matter. Uh, the D you can see the D uh, riders also uh, saving themselves a little bit before the climb. So you see some people hesitant to take the front, like the last kilometer leading up into the leg snapper. Yeah, exactly. And I think in the D category, when it comes to the advantages and the C category, the advantages that the other groups will have over them, it's it's going to be that section is going to be where they really have to press the pedals. They're going to have to really have to push the pace in that D category to uh, minimize the damages that are done 
uh, over that leg snapper because watts per kilogram when we're talking about that it really matters when he hit the uphills exactly and, and you already see some uh, they are splitting up the different groups and it's all about getting back together if possible of course you don't want to wait for for some some of the guys that get dropped or the girls that get dropped but but you want to stay together with a big group as possible there's still uh, three laps to go yeah, and we already are seeing a little bit of a break actually happening in the D category. There's one rider off the front right now, maybe a little bit over category limits. We're seeing holding about 3.1 watts per kilogram or so, so then maybe, um, you know, some of the community organizers here with the race might be looking at this and saying, okay, trying to make a judgment as whether or not it accounts for the day here. But Coulson there in the D category making a solid effort there. It back in with the Cs, though, as it looks like we're losing the D category feed here for just a moment. We'll see you get that back up for everybody. But the Cs now, we have seen Nielsen here. Coming from your team, DBR. Yeah, Coming from the Danish yeah, exactly. bike riders. Well, they head into the uh, into the climb. Pretty cool to see. It's nice to see uh, her up front and uh, pushing the tempo in this group. And hopefully she can stay with the group and uh, keep the others behind and uh, be in for a good result here. Yeah, C category here. It looks like Marlene uh, Rahug Nielsen, DBR that we were just looking at a moment ago. Uh, this rider, level 29, 85 races out on Zwift, actually. Raced in the Heino Cup, actually, yesterday and uh, took 19th place. So good to see that she's also taking place in some of the larger community uh, competitive more well not that this isn't a competitive race it is, it is a competitive race but it's for the category Very it's still much. for the win for every category but also taking place in one of the series uh for some points out there as well yeah it's definitely nice to see her participating i think when people they get into the racing on swift they almost want to race every day because it's just too much fun yeah, that's definitely something uh, we've seen. Maybe almost a little bit. Some, sometimes they race so much that you got to wonder. I mean, speaking of racers that are out there in the out there racing a lot. I mean, if I look through some of the results here and the live results for each one of the categories, I recognize half the names that are showing up here day in and day out. Actually, racing the Fusion, the at the Hino Cup, the uh, Dirt Series. Um, Ing Johnson's actually out there from the KISS Racing Team. Bex Remington is out there as well. Uh, good to see her hammering away. So a lot of riders here that almost it can get. I think that the reality of the motivation, and that's one of the things that's really cool about the Lamb Chop Racing, is that the motivation that it gives to get the best uh, fitness out of and, and, and response in your in, out of your workout for, um, for that day. And I think that's part of the reason why racing gets so addictive or so like i i just want to keep on swifting because the reality is that jumping into a workout at least for me workout mode's not nearly as entertaining as hammering against some of your pals out on swift <laughs> I'm, I'm the same nathan i'm exactly the same I'm, I, I love just racing every day even if i'm not going to be up there on the competitive side i just have always have a group to to stake on to and another thing is when my friends pop up on the companion app and I'm not sitting on Swift. I, I get kind of uh, jealous and uh, like I want I want to get on as well. Yeah, hundred percent. The uh, the reality of of wanting to uh, jump on the bike indoors as we get the quad uh, view here, we can see how things are playing out and where they are on on the course right now. And it looks like first place here in the A category. They're about to head on, or they're actually heading up their climb at the eight percent gradient at the, toward the front right now. It looks like, and then it, and then I believe that's a Z Sun rider in the A category now taking up toward the front. It's going to be BRT as well. The B category already down uh, the other side here at this point heading toward the sprint but we see see back is there coming from the turbo team now neelan one of the top competitors in the hilo hino cup taking up toward the taking over toward the front from the brt team revo is also there coming out of switzerland grab grobler from revo as well so revo has shown up in force it looks like again they've been a serious team out here for the ladies recently alex it looks like the a the a girls are really good at keeping staying together like they're not sprinting over the the leg snapper they're trying to keep it together because they know that's the only way they're going to be able to catch up to the b's and the c's and the d's so uh, experience is key going up uh, this climb that you don't want to just uh, sprint up it and explode the pellets and you want to want to stick together yeah there's that's we talk about this a lot in, in the broadcasts uh when it comes to the race being shut down a lot of times when it comes to breakaways uh, with the pack having this snowballing speed effect. 
Uh, but in this race, though, in, in, in the Lamb Chop, it's almost like using that to your advantage all the time, knowing that if you open up too much of a gap over the rest of your category, you are not going to get as much of that snowball effect. And you can go off the front and drive the pace a little bit, and all you're going to do is actually slow the pack down because the reality is, is your speed was not given to the rest of the riders, actually. So not opening up too much big of gaps, making sure everybody's sticking together and working well together is so incredibly key to be able to win for your category. Now, Chop Racing does the category, you know, we keep on talking about the category itself winning, but it's not about the category winning at the end of the day. And that's why it's called the Chop, because at a certain point, the Chop needs to happen, which is when the category that knows it's going to win or thinks it's going to win is, or at least thinks some of the riders in there are like, I think we have a chance at this, and they start taking the gloves off and stop start, stop working together, and they start fighting each other to get to the line. That's when it really gets exciting, Alex. Yeah, and that can be dangerous as well. Like, uh, you could kind of give the example of um, a breakaway with like less than one minute and then a chasing peloton coming from behind. When you start to play that tactical game, then the guys and the girls from behind can pretty easily catch up to you. So. It's really about not playing too much tactics, but just almost going until the last kilometer, last 500 meters, and then you can sprint it out. But if you start thinking you're safe two, three kilometers out, then it's easy to catch up to you. Yeah, 100%, especially with the hard charging A and B category. You know, I think the C's and the D's have their work cut out for them each and every week. I mean, so do the other categories, but the big uh, time gaps that we are seeing here down at the bottom of the screen. But uh, at a certain point, there is a point in the race that the, the B's and the A's a lot of times will know that, it, that the, the race is coming back together. I think the C and the D category, at no point can they really trust that it's not going to be coming back together if they start infighting. Because if they slow down too much, next thing you know, the reality of the speeds of these other categories are just so incredibly high. They can shut down a minute in just a few kilometers. Exactly. Yeah, so we're looking here now at, at C. Scott here from Z, Z Sun R now. Remington now toward the front there in the B category as well. Fourth place, 21 riders it looks like still all together now. Uh, it's going to be Fetter here now through Australia as they come through for their first lap now, completing the first of three on the Innsbruck ring uh, for the B category. 8.8 .8 kilometers in for this category. They've got about 1K to close down to the Cs. Uh, and, you know, this is a pretty well-designed uh, time gaps, it looks like, this week here, Alex. I think it's going to probably come right to the line here between this B and C and D category. Now, the A's look like they got a lot more to work on as they haven't brought very much back, and that might have something to do with the number of riders in that category. Exactly. I, I think it's definitely because it's such a small group, so it's it looks like it's going to be uh, B, D, B, C, and D uh, cat that are going to be almost bunched up together on the last lap um, but I, I have a tendency just to uh, to root for for d and c guys because they don't get the chance very often to to be on the big stage and win so um that's what i like about the lamb chop races is that you can kind of root for some of the uh, not as strong riders as, as the ones you're used to seeing on uh, some of the bigger series yeah 100 percent. and you know we were talking about the uh reality of larger groups having an advantage here but look at the time gap here with this d category now we're seeing averages around 2.4 2.3 watts per kilogram right within the category limits here if you're looking to jump into some lamb chop racing make sure to do so we've you know we're going to have these these races here for the european broadcast time uh we still are going to have two more to go race number five race number six december 12th and december 19th and you can jump into any, anybody can race in these. It's not just about, about the elite racers. But speaking of the D category and having large numbers, they don't have large numbers here. And they are doing such a good job of staying well organized here. 130 still. They're about halfway done. I mean, so it's three laps, right? We're a lap and a half in it's, at this point. They still got the climb ahead of them, though. They're going to have some work to do. But this could be a D category victory, even with such a small amount of riders here, Galax. It's really impressive seeing the Ds working together as good as they're doing right now, but they still have two times the leg snapper, and I think that's the most costly place for them because they're definitely going to be able to uh, lose a lot of time over the leg snapper. If they only had it one more time, I would give them a good shot at winning, but um, I see the way that the Bs are working together and also the size of the group that I think 
they're going to be able to catch, especially if they go hard over the leg snap at the next two times. Yeah, and I think the B category with that distance that we're seeing between them and that time gap now between the B category and the Ds and the Cs, they may be the favorites on the day. But now as we do look at the A category, maybe getting a little bit motivation in the legs. Now back is there from Turbo, making the way to the front. Vicky Nealon there as well. BRT, four watts per kilogram toward the front. So they're really doing a good job of driving the pace, it looks like here. Putting some sacrifice on the line. Now 167 beats per minute. You can see in the upper left-hand corner right now, 250 watts, there, as you can see. Now, you might be wondering, if you're newer to Zwift and you're wondering, why am I seeing different Different watts per kilogram, different watts in the upper left hand corner between these riders, and then different watts per kilogram on the right hand side of the screen. So each one of these categories is decided by watts per kilogram. And this is mainly for those who are, okay, what is this about? What are you talking about, watts per kilogram? Essentially, you take the kilograms that your body weighs and you divide the watts you see in the upper left hand corner there by that and you get a watts per kilogram number a ratio right now vicky milan's putting out 3.9 3.8 at 230 or so watts and so that is how and, and that is essentially what one of the main things that you use for performance judging a performance uh an ability level in cycling actually and so uh functional threshold power at a watts per kilogram how many watts per kilogram can you hold for a certain amount of time will tell you different peak powers. Are you a good one minute, five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute, one hour? Uh, those All different peak powers that you can have for your watts per kilogram for those different time durations. Different kinds of cyclists. You know, actually, Alex, being a track cyclist, I get the feeling that you were not that interested in FTP, that you might have been a little bit more interested in a different number. Um, peak power, are you thinking about peak power? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm thinking it's more about for free. I mean, you're thinking one to maybe 10 minute efforts rather than these one hour efforts. Well, actually, uh, there's a lot of different disciplines. So uh, one of the my disciplines that I was really good at and world champion in was uh, team pursuit. So that's obviously like a, a sub four minute effort. But uh, also Madison is actually one hour. So you have some of these m more endurance races. So uh, we wanted to keep FTP up and we also did like most of our training was based around the road and, and actually increasing that number, um, which essentially is just power to weight ratio if you want to compare it to a car. So it's just about having uh, as much power and, and weighing as little as possible. Like in general, that also goes with the track, but it's not as important as if you're sitting on a, on a really steep climb in the Tour de France, but, but it's still pretty important for even a track rider. Gotcha, right on, right on. So FTP still dominating even out on the track is what we're being, what we're learning here. So, and uh, you know that is the, the, one of the best markers of general fitness, and that is why we're using it here, obviously for each one of these categories. Uh, but we are seeing Neeland here toward the front, 4.3. And so the main reason we're bringing that up, though, is people might be wondering why is there such a big difference between the uh, numbers on screen that we're seeing in each one of those categories. And that is exactly why is that each of the categories with the handicap race gets different time gaps because of their ability level. And uh, that's why each and every one of these riders that do jump in do get a chance at winning today. Okay, lane to the front here from the Revo team. It looks like out of Switzerland taking over at 4.3. A lot of sacrifice going on in this ladies race here now at the front for this A category to try and bring things back. It's, they've brought back almost a full minute actually um, as the other categories run into their leg snapper. So this is going to be a challenge it looks like for um, even the B category at this point. Like you said, it's almost like uh, this, uh, the B category is running out of steam and then uh, the A category just started to get, gain some speed. So now they have to work together if they want to be able to catch this, the C and the Ds. So uh, it's almost better if they caught them after the leg snapper, because I think some of the Bs are going to drop straight through this uh, peloton when, when they hit the leg snapper in 500 meters. Yeah, I agree 100% there. We are seeing in the B category actually. Remington trying to take over at the front of that category right now. They're about to take that right-hand turn over the bridge. Now in the A category, you can see here they are heading through this uh, downtown village section that is about a K out from the leg snapper at this point. This is the front end of the beast. It's still a, a solid gap here, about a minute and 20 seconds. But as you said, there's a lot of speed in that A category, coming on to try and take these uh, these ladies out in this uh, in this 
in this B category right now. As they hit in the lower left-hand corner there, that B category climb, they are using lots of feather power-ups to keep as much speed as they possibly can. Because they know that A's are coming on, they may start to really break apart a little bit. The C's now are, it looks like, just a little ways up, actually, from this B category. They're both on the leg snapper at this point. The D category is on the other side, heading into the sprint section in just a moment. So all almost coming back together a little bit here between each one of these categories as each one of them make their way over the top of this leg snapper here. So uh, the gaps at this point really coming down. They still have a lap and a quarter or so to go as we look at the C category making their way down the leg snapper now. Looking at second place, it is going to be Sonia Whiteman actually. 30 not level 39 out on Swift. She's got 161 races riding for P Team PTZ. That's Team Portugal Swift. And it looks like this is one of the ri racers actually that's been out on Swift for a long time. I see four pages of results. I'm looking all the way back to uh, August 31st, 2016 in the EVR race actually, way back. So Sonia Whiteman, long time racer out on Swift, jumping into the C category, taking over first place as they head downhill 134 watts and 171 beats per minute here at this point so um you know 56 seconds up to that d category they're just heading through the uh sprint section and with a lap to go gonna be very difficult to hold a minute off but uh they've done pretty well with it it was i was almost two minutes i think from the d's to the c's at the start of this last lap so they still have a chance yeah it looks like the B and the C are going to come together as the first group. I actually thought A was going to be able to catch B as I saw some of the rear, the rear end of the B just before the leg snapper. But uh, if B and C are coming together now, it, they might be the strongest group uh, for the last lap. Um, still more than one minute back to the A, so they're going to have to really stay focused if they want to be able to catch them in, in one lap in Innsbruck. Yeah, I'm seeing Vicky Nealon here getting into that super tuck, getting a little bit of an extra speed there coming from it. Barrow there coming from Turbo. Bacchus is right behind her as well. There's a little bit of a gap between them. They're struggling now, it looks like, to keep the group together. Some of the riders that maybe have burned a lot of energy at this point starting to fall off the pace a little bit. Vicky Nealon now jumping up to six watts per kilogram in the lower right-hand corner there of your screen, hammering away. They're doing 43 kilometers per hour currently out on course, and it looks like at the front end of... The uh, at the front end of the D category, we see Thomas off the front just a little bit. I am seeing S Strange. I saw that in game there, S Strange. Love the message coming on through. I hope Nathan is letting everybody know how incredibly difficult this course is. And we can see it. We can see the suffering, that's for sure. At 171 beats per minute coming from Sonia Whiteman. We're seeing 163 here currently coming from Dinham. I mean, th this course is so difficult. And you want, Alex, the reality of how much that leg snapper takes out of you and then having to have some sort of time trial continuance, because it's not steady, Alex, right? It's this kick right in the gut. I mean, you exactly. just get punched Ex in the gut and then you got to hold. Exactly. Like, I can actually give you a good example. I was uh, in the Geo, I was racing with Team Garmin and, and we had some somewhat of a similar situation like this it was completely flat and then there was what this one really steep hill one kilometer like 10 percent average and then um i was going full gas to the bottom of the climb and then i had my teammates hesedal christian vandervelt and they were just going their speed up the climb but the problem is their uh, power to weight ratio is way better than mine so i was just already hurting before i hit it and then i got dropped so sometimes having strong teammates isn't always um an advantage let me say like they have to be really careful when you have some bigger guys and it's kind of the same thing you see here that the wiki Nealand, like she's almost too strong for the a category so she drops some of them and then she has to wait for them and it takes a lot of time to get organized again and get back to chasing the b's and the c's that's a great point actually the organization and making sure that you're able to work together with the riders here but i think Part of that is the fun of lamb chop racing, right? I think part of that is why you get such a great workout out of it as well. But, you know, the reality is, is there, there's also the reality there of you want to win, got to keep things organized. Um, but obviously there's this 
tempering that needs to happen of some of the stronger riders. But at the same time, then once it does come back together, then they head back to the front and push that sacrifice. So it's kind of like the riders that are just trying to hang on, they get pushed over their ability level. And then the riders who are trying to lead out the category, they got to head back to the front and take over. And if they don't, the whole category just slows down because the riders that are sitting in looking to just grab some air again, they need to just get a little bit of reprieve. So it's this ebb and flow of that category to try and keep the speed as high as they possibly can. In this course, you know, being, you know, the next race is going to be a little bit different. I think it's going to be a little bit more of this steady effort, right? Because we're going to be out on the, uh, we're going to be out on the Greater London Flat for the open race, for the men's and women's open race. Um, and uh, because of that, I think it's not going to be quite as hard to keep things together and people can get more of a consistent effort. And there's maybe going to be a little bit more chop tactics where if people in the pack can trust that it's going to come back together, you might see people kind of not taking up as much effort at the front. But this one, I think, with that big punch in the middle, like you said, the riders who maybe not have as much watts per kilogram but have just raw watts, they struggle to hang on. Yeah, I agree totally. On Greater London Flat, you have a tendency to see a lot of more people just basically sitting on, waiting for the sprint, just trusting that the other guys are going to do the work. Um, which you don't see as much here. You do see it a little bit on the flat, but people need to be aware going over the leg snapper. Like the, you can easily get dropped if you're just not paying attention. So you ha you still have to stick to the front. And and then if you are in the front, you might as well do a pull or two just to to keep the speed high. This is really interesting to see how well set up this did, this is with the organizers here. The timings were almost perfect. Look at the lead group here. 41 seconds, 58 seconds between the Bs and the Cs, 132. It's about the, exactly the same here. You know, as far as the time gets, how, how far they've come down each lap. They've done an amazing job of making the timings well here. A minute and a half is about what the A's brought back over the last lap. They've got one lap to go here. We're looking at the D category. They're heading through the downtown main area here at this point. They've got, it looks like, I believe it's going to be, according to power.com, 29. No, excuse me, not 29. Uh, we're looking at the live results here, and they are going to be doing a total today, I believe, of about 27 kilometers. So, you know, we've got only 7 kilometers or so to go at this point. They've got to hold off. Is hard charging 35 seconds of the C category in this D category. Harris here now we are seeing working hard at the front 2.4 watts per There's the C category with Whiteman now. They're heading through that same section we just saw the D's in just a moment ago. They're going to take this left hand turn, go into a straight, and then they almost have them within sight. Once you get them within sight, the motivation it really picks up, Alex. Exactly, but also remember that this is the last lap, so all bets are off. You, you're going to see people going full gas over the leg snap and trying to stay away to, to the end. So uh, there's not going to be the same collaboration as you've seen on the previous laps between uh, the different categories. It's going to be everybody for themselves at this point. Yeah, once you start seeing those riders coming on and trying to chase you down, it really changes the motivations, really changes uh, how you start racing. Because if some people it feels like are not keeping with the pace that you need to set, then you just need to start dropping them off. They're taking this right-hand turn. You can see the uh, with the D category. The C category, they're looking at that right-hand turn just ahead of them, about 500 meters or so. Interesting to see how close things are. Now the B category with a rider on the front there looks like it's going to be Annabelle Cox, I believe, from the BRT Hellcats now taking over toward the front, trying to overtake the C category. There is the catch, actually. B's and the C's all together. Now the C category still has the opportunity to take the wind here as they overtake them annabelle now now flying right on through the c category gonna <laughs> bump it up here they still have an opportunity but with the with the leg snapper in there i'm not sure they're gonna be able to do it there alex she might try to go solo all the way out here which is uh, unusual but does does rise a little bit like we see two percent here over the bridge so uh, and I, from experience i can tell it is pretty hard going over this bridge and then you just have the last uh, two k's on the flat through the city on the couples and then you take a lift over the river and uh, then from the leg snapper it's pretty much full on to the finish line yeah and because of that leg snapper i'm not sure the c category is going to be able to hang on with these bees they just got the higher watts per kilogram i think the c category is going to be really hard pressed 
to jump in amongst them and really work together with them once they hit that section of course. They're out on the bridge here now. The D category is almost in within sights now as well because they're still on the bridge. You can see in the upper left hand corner, they're at a 1% gradient that's going to go downhill in just a moment. Back in with the front of the seas now. Here's Williams now from Revo now taking over and it looks like B category again now taking over toward the front here as there is the absolute takeover from the bees and it's going to be fader here and now, now it's also uh, bees responsibility to, B to uh, stay ahead now it's bees responsibility to stay ahead uh, and keep the A's behind because uh, it's the last two kilometers before hitting the leg snapper for the final time so they need to they need to work together all the way to the hit the leg snapper and, and also of course they have to catch the d's that is a great point actually with the responsibility because it isn't about letting up now it's about taking over the race and making sure you hold on to it all the way to the end because you still have a hard charging A's category and you've got the D's that are still off the front as we're looking at right now working well together and you don't see you don't see the B's at yet just as of yet they're almost maybe almost within sight they're coming through a couple of these little turns here and they are maybe just in the background there you just see a few avatars there over the shoulders of that D category so Bees have a carrot to chase now. It looks like uh, the bees and the seas are going to be able to catch up, uh, e maybe even before they hit the leg snapper. And then it's going to be, uh, it's all, it's going to be all about keeping the ace behind at that point. And uh, that's what bee, all the bee girls are trying to do. They're just trying to keep the pace high here, catch these, and then focus on on the final. Yeah, we are seeing uh, the A category as well, just coming into these same sections of the course. They've already gone over the bridge, actually. It's getting very close now between each one of these categories. So the B category, I have a feeling we're going to see a huge punch from these riders, actually, the moment that they hit that leg snapper, because the B category is going to be extremely motivated, I think, to really take as much time as they can over the top, because from there on out, I think that's when the chop really happens. Over the top of that leg snapper, you're gonna see some of these B category riders say, we can't wait any longer. These A category riders are coming and breathing down our neck at this point. They've made the catch. The B category is now officially taking over the front end of this race now. Now it's gonna be up to them to hold off the hard charging A's. The A's are just jumping into that straightaway uh, that we just saw the B's uh, go through it just a moment ago here. Now to the front, it's going to be Vicky Nealon. We were seeing a little bit of chat just a moment ago that it's going to be up to Nealon maybe just to let go of the rest of the pack here and see yeah. who else can follow. Because at a certain point, Alex, there's just going to be no benefit any longer to dragging her nails along. I was just about to say that I think Vic Nealon is just going to go solo from, from the leg trap. That's her, uh, the leg snapper. That's the only chance she has to catch up to the bees, which are still organized and still quite a big group. So I think she's just going to go full gas from the bottom and, and see how close she can get to, to the front pack. If she does get a couple of riders to go go along with her, I mean, back is from Turbo. I wouldn't be caught counting her out. Team Turbo is a strong, strong team. They're taking the left-hand turn. We do see the B category just climbing up over the top of the leg snapper here. We do see the A category. They're about to take that right-hand turn. This is the difference. 30 seconds. You can see it on course right now. The difference between each of the camera views. Just heading halfway through or so, uh, their leg snapper here. At the front, it's going to be Dave Villegaard there coming out of the Netherlands. Goodyear now out of Australia. Five watts be coming to the front. And Jansen now coming from the KRT team, taking over at third place or so now as, at the front end. Now the A category. They're starting their leg snapper. Look at the difference in the wattages here. Vicky Nealon, 6.3 watts per kilogram at the front of this category here. And an 8% uphill gradient now. B category, though, 4.6, 5.0. You can see the differences, Alex. What a big difference it makes for the speed that you can climb at. But now A category, Alex, here comes Kajan. Wow. Hammering at the front now, 6.8 <laughs> watts per kilogram. What an attack. Wow, that's so impressive. Like, you want to get Nealon with you so you can work together and maybe also barrel, but it, it's so crucial now to, to catch up to them because uh, this is the last opportunity. It's the last climb. There's a little counter climb in 500 meters, and then it's pretty much flat along the river, across the river, and back to the finish line. It's really split up, though, here, Alex. Look at it. I mean, Kaja, Nilan, Barrel, Bacchus, 
Look at the B category. They've got a few riders going off the front now. Four seconds, though, between Federer, as you can see here, and the actual front of this B category. So they're getting organized. A's do not have quite as many to work with. They've only got, from what I can see, three riders. As Bacchus has fallen off from Team Turbo here at this point. So three riders in the A category working together to try and close things down to the front of that B category. They've only got about... I think it's about four kilometers to the finish or so at this point. I mean, really going to have to put everything on the line. Vicky Nealon now coming through. Six watts per kilogram coming from her at the front of the B category now. A little bit of a gap, actually. A, actually, a chop Knock. is happening at the front of the B category as the rider of the Netherlands here. De Villiger now is completely just saying, race is over, girls. We <laughs> got to go. And two-second gap now. Uh, we saw uh, Neelan use that uh, momentum she gained from the, the descent to the next climb, and then she just went for it. So she wanted to go solo, so she doesn't have to worry about the sprint. She just has to worry about catching catching the beast. But uh, it could be it could be, prove fatal that she didn't don't have anybody to help her. But sometimes it's just easier to go alone. You don't have to worry about anything. You can just go all out in the hurt box and then uh, see if you can catch the beast. Coming to my mind now is the reality of a pack sprint. That, that these B category riders now, because they're all together and able to hold on to some speed as they work together here in the A category, they have only have three riders. They have to essentially team time trial just everything they got. The B category, they can, I mean, they have to still put some effort in, but there is a reality that they get a little bit of free speed, actually, as they head through this sprint banner here. The difference is not very much. There's the sprint banner between the A category and the B category. That's the difference right here, as we do have on the front here, the Riders of the Netherlands of Villagari again taking over. Remington sitting on the wheel there. Jansen, there's third wheel now, as you can see. But the A category now kind of coming back together, though. A few more riders joining them. I this think uh, Nealon still has B 11 category. seconds, right? So Neelan still has 11 uh, oh, seconds. Oh, you're but correct. We were Actually, about no, you're totally, you're right on there. She went. I missed that. Vicky Neelan just yeah. dropped everybody off. Great point there. She's about to catch them, but she needs to catch them now. She needs to catch that B category now because just riding through these B category might not be happening because some of these riders will be sitting in and will have a kick that Vicky will not have because she's had to be in full on exactly. TT mode. But luckily, uh, like for. For Neil and Bees are playing that tactical game. We were talking about it earlier. Like now they're just focusing on the sprint. That's why they're kind of sitting up a little bit. It almost seems like. But then again, you're right. A lot of them have pressure legs. They are sitting on, getting the heart rate down, taking some deep breath, ready for the sprint. So even though I think she could catch them, I don't think she's going to be the strongest in the sprint. It's, I mean, it's coming right to the line here. She has to catch them now. She's a solo rider. There's no group with her to support her at this point. These B category, they're going to have a whole lot of riders with a lot of extra energy sitting in. Devilligar here now trying to make something happen. It looks like Remington now, 4.0 watts per kilogram. Vicky has almost caught them. I mean, it's like 100 meters. It's right there. She needs to grab on, maybe get a few seconds of reprieve, but it's 5.2 watts per kilogram, 184 beats per minute. I don't oh, think she's, she's going, going to be able to sprint through at all, Alex. I mean, look at this, Alex. This is so, so crucial. So much suffering to watch. I can almost feel the pain in my legs, like uh, all the acids uh, going through my legs. Like she's just going full out in the hurt locker. And uh, it's impressive to see, even though I don't think she's going to win. It's just I want to just uh, applaud her for the effort anyway. It's so impressive that she caught up solo all the way from the leg snapper to at least this uh, rear end of the beast. And now she's going past them. Well, she's gone past a group that fell off here, but now we've got back in with the B category, and it looks like it's going to be MJ here. Arrow power up, not going to be able to have him for the A the category. It was so incredibly close here, but it looks like MJ out of Denver. But oh, a dropout! A drop Remington out. is going to come through! No. There was a dropout there, and it looks like Remington's <laughs> going to take advantage of it. Now up into the 8, 9 watts per kilogram there, and it's going to be Remington across the line. B category takes the win in the ladies only race for the lamb chop again so amazing release race here out on the innsbruck course b category for the win vicky Nealon just coming across little ways behind for the brt team there just a moment ago back is then it looks like 20 seconds back for team turbo hammered across turbo actually with a one two in the a category amongst each other but uh we'll have the results up here in just a second four the lamb chop here as uh, it looks like it is going to be Bex Remington. Solid result here coming from her. 39 minutes in total of all-out effort there. 
and see Scott and MJ after that dropout. Too bad to see three seconds back. Holmson there from Team Revo, and it's going to be Sarah Goodyear followed by Amy Ganson. Jessica Hamilton from the BRT team and Vicky Nealon. Then, oh, Vicky, eighth place. That is an amazing effort. I mean, think about that, Alex. Breaking away from the rest of the A's and just solo TT and almost catching the rest of that pack, but not quite able to make it happen. Oh, that was it was so impressive. Like, had she had a bigger group in the A's or they've been able to work a little more better together in the beginning of the race, she, she would have been able to catch them. So going alone from the leg snapper with a big group in front is just uh, it's just hard. Even though, she, even if she caught up to them, it would be so difficult in the sprint because she's going to be beyond her limit at that point. Like, we could just almost feel it ourselves just looking at uh, the watts per kilo she put out. Yeah, very difficult, uh, very difficult to make it happen solo there. It was a small A group. The B category, like we said earlier, the number of riders in your category can make a huge difference. Uh, now we are going to be heading on over to London, though, for uh, the Greater London Flat Course uh, for the open race in the Lamb Chop Series here. So let's head on over to London as uh, we are going to be doing, I believe, two laps on the Greater London Flat uh, as we're getting the last look here of Innsbruck now. But we're going to be loading up London here, and uh, what, it's going to be Lamb Chop Racing here. Greater London Flat, this is going to be the open race for two laps out here, 29 kilometers in total, and a little bit different in the category time differences there. We can see four minutes, seven minutes, and 10 minutes, respectively, for the East, the C, B, and A categories. Uh, now, this is a race that's open to uh, men and women, so anybody can jump on in here. You can see each of the category limits that you can jump into if you are going to be racing. So 1 to 2.4 for Ds, Cs, 2.5 to 3.1, 2.2 to 2, 4.0 for the B category, and 4.0 to 5.0 for the A's. So as we jump on into the racing here, you can see the D category already jumping out on course there with 52nd place right now. We've got a lot of riders, though. I think we, for this race, I believe we saw about, I, I think there's like 400 racers, maybe more, that have jumped into the race out here in this, in this, uh, in total between all the categories. Some of the fastest racers that we know about on Zwift have jumped in here as well. As I look through the um, Zwift rankings, over on ZwiftPower.com, according to the, I mean, we got Brian Hodges out there, Simon Nielsen, coming from the Fusion ECT team. Might be a name that you're familiar with there, uh, Alex, as well. Yeah. Vidar Mayo, Kirsten Oftedal, Morton Vang, all from the, the team, uh, new Callis eSports racing team. You know, let's talk a little bit about Team Callis and in, in the A category. I mean, they kind of came out of nowhere, and suddenly they're just this force at the front end of these races. Yeah, we saw it all uh, yesterday uh, with Morten Bang uh, was the guy that actually uh, started it all out on the on the last lap, started attacking and uh, and put people uh, in the hurt locker um, in the Heino Cup yesterday. So uh, he's always been a strong rider, especially on the climbs. Like he's a really, really skinny guy, so the watch per kilos uh, out of this world. Uh, I just want to really quickly point out that uh, we're starting next to the, the Olympic Velodrome in London. So uh, that's kind of my terrain. So uh, maybe someday we can see uh, a swift race inside there. I love it. Love it. And uh, that's, uh, that's going to put a little extra motivation there in the riders, perhaps, as we head down the start straight here with the D category. Now, currently off the front, though, we've got uh, Lupo coming out of Italy, actually, 2.5 watts per kilogram. Now we have Conley out of the US of A. Legallo there now in third place here. 54 riders, it looks like, in that D category. And as we jump in with the start of the Cs, we'll start getting time gaps at the bottom of the screen in a moment here. 143 beats per minute. Looks like they're doing a pretty good job of keeping things together. 101 riders in this C category. So in this open race, you got a lot more matches to work with. But look at how strung out this is. These riders need to get organized. It looks like they started very fast, and... This has to kind of get a little bit more into a pack situation and not a strung out elastic snapping situation because the more it snaps, the less matches you got to burn in the category, Alex. 
Yeah, and also actually some of the the hardest uh, some of the hardest terrain on the London flat is actually the beginning going through the finish line and that small climb. But it did remind me a little bit of uh, watching a, a pro peloton all stretched out because of some crosswinds. So it's a little bit too stretched out if they want to work together. But sometimes it could be an advantage just to get kind of get rid of the the people that are not going to be able to contribute anyway. So uh, that's what the first two climbs are for. If it's such a big group, like you're still going to have 50 guys after these two climbs and uh, it's going to be stronger guys than uh, if you just let off the gas in the beginning. Yeah, that is true. At a certain point, it is about the result. It is about the speed. And if you are, you know, only a little bit over that category limit and uh, you're you're not really driving the pace so incredibly hard that something that a C category wouldn't be able to handle or a D category shouldn't be able to handle, um, you know, then there's just the reality that got to let it go and keep the speed as high as you possibly can. You know, in team time trials you were talking about, you know, when when Hegedal or, 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 or one of the, the stronger riders would just go and you couldn't hang with it, at a certain point in the team, the, the, the team car saying, just sorry, you got to let Alex go. He's just not holding oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> not holding that's, the lap that's, <laughs> that's, that's exactly what uh, Jonathan Watson he said. Uh, just uh, let Alex go. Uh, we, we don't need him because we were going for Hegedal. Uh, for for the Malia Rosa and for the win, um, but it was really unfortunate because I was uh, actually the best guy in the general class. I was uh, third after Taylor Finney in the prologue, so I was already up there. So I would have had the Malia Rosa. I would have been in the lead of the the Giro. So, um, but they chose uh, the team over me, which I I do understand. But at that moment in time, I was pretty uh, disappointed uh, that that I couldn't <laughs> stay with the with the front group or uh, with the team. 100% understandable and exactly just like in the chop here. There's going to be plenty of disappointment in the C category, I would think, if they get dropped off early over some of these climbs here. Now the B category now coming uh, into the race as they jump off out on course here. And uh, as they do, it does look like we've got a huge contingent of riders here in this B category. And they are out on course with five, six, seven watts per kilogram actually at the front. 119 racers jumping into this B category, actually. Dirt's out there. We're seeing uh, dads inside riding trainers now. There are so many riders, actually, in this category. We're seeing Kaguila now coming out of uh, Italy now in first place. 4.4 watts per kilogram toward the front of the B category. The Ds, though, now they're heading through that 1K to go banner. Now, that is not actually 1K to go in the race. It's uh, simply the... Um, They'll be going underneath that twice, actually, out on course here as they head through each one of the laps now. But uh, we're watching here. It looks like the front of the D category, as we got the image there correct on screen now, is calmly now. But now backing with the Cs as they are heading on through their uh, start along the river. They'll be taking a right-hand turn toward the climb into the square. And uh, quite a big gap here still, 3.30. 6.43 back we're seeing with that seven-minute lead given back to the B category actually so and it's 10 minutes actually for the A's now that's a pretty big gap 10 minutes but we saw the that's A a category huge gap. completely take over it's a huge gap I mean 10 minutes like trying to bring that back is going to be I mean there's going to have to be some serious firepower going on here yeah they, they uh, we have to assume that they are more organized than any of the other categories and they're going to be able to take some strong turns uh, on the front but uh, it seems like a lot but uh, yeah We'll see if they catch him, and um, I'll be surprised if they do. But but we've seen the A rides, like in general, the A category has just become stronger and stronger. Like we were talking about yesterday, we're starting to see some world tour numbers on on, on the A category on Swift. So uh, there's some strong guys there. So they need a big gap to to the front. Yeah, and like we were saying, I mean, some of these new esports teams that are jumping out on course that are going to be in the A category. You were saying specifically Morton Vang out there we're seeing for a 20 minute power 5.7 watts per kilogram coming in at 60 kilograms so uh 342 is the raw power on that i mean there is some serious firepower that can hammer it we are seeing up in the 5.6 from team cryogen there as well uh some of these riders can hold insane wattage and insane speed and uh this a category i think is going to uh, and that's why they get that 10 minutes we're seeing jonathan better out there as well uh, riding for Team Dirt, 
Gavin Dempster, winner of the live event in London 2017. I mean, this is uh, this is a, a group that they need to give 10 minutes to because they have under it's been under underestimated in the past, and it's uh, ended up with um, some of the, uh, the the groups just getting shut down pretty quickly, actually. So a category has jumped out on court has just jumped out on course. Uh, I believe we do have 78 riders, if I'm not incorrect, there that have jumped out there, taken over toward the front. It is going to be Evoke there with uh, Pentelari, Pentelier, uh with Team Evoke. Now it's going to be Team Draft as well at the front there with Jim McQuaid in that A category. So uh, hammering away right now. A category riders now jumping out on course. Look at the speeds. And this is a crazy start. You know, Chop Racing, it might not start where they're just trying to drop everybody right away, but they still got to kick the speed though you still have to get up to speed i mean in a team time trial there is still an initial push i would think to just you got you got you yeah. got a hammer at the front like any other start yeah you need to get up to that speed that you want as quick as possible that you want to be maintain however long the the team time trial is so it it, it, it is a kick in the beginning i i think swift is <laughs> a little more than unusual it's almost a sprint but it is definitely get up to speed as quickly as possible and then find your rhythm that's uh, that's essential and speaking of what's peculiar I, mean, I saw a commercial it's a, a garment commercial like maybe maybe six seven years ago where with J jonathan bartz he actually said uh, he was watching a uh, Garmin file from Dan Martin and one from Ryder Hirschidal and he was like uh, when he saw six watts per kilo he was ready to win the tour that was kind of his magic number so when you say 5.7 uh, that's really really strong numbers yeah like we were saying I mean the the reality is is and we we're talking about this yesterday a lot of times we get questions like people are like well who's this guy and who's that guy who's this lady I mean th they're putting out these numbers there's a reality that this is something we've talked about early on, and it's kind of what Zwift Academy is all about. Early on in the world of Zwift, um, you know, in the beta, and as we went through and we started doing the broadcast, people started asking questions about what kind of levels could we see on Zwift? Well, there's the reality of you have the entire pool of cyclists in the entire world. You have all the genetic and training possibilities brought into this virtual environment. It would just make sense that eventually you're gonna start seeing the cream of the crop of human genetics start showing up out on the platform and you can race across the entire world uh, at any time of the of the day which is uh, something quite unique that's that's one of the things you have so many races so you're going to be able to figure out who's the strongest um as the platform grows and you get more users it's just going to be a bigger pool of talent to pick from so eventually you're going to get some of these riders winning classics or maybe even one day the tour coming from swift like we've seen in the past with track riders coming out and and being able to win the tour with wiggins and uh Jaren thomas yeah 100 percent. and that that's uh one of the I, I think coolest things about swift is being able to see the real life efforts coming into into the virtual world and then taking the training that's in the virtual world taking into real life efforts as well and uh the, the mixture of those two things and you know that's probably one of that's that's a you know a huge it would be absolutely huge to see that kind of a, a result coming from any of the riders that build their uh career out of of zwift and also maybe even a career in zwift as we have the new esports as well so in a genre in and of itself with the world championships being announced for next year now, as you can see the a category that's where we're talking about for the elite racers in the lower right hand side of the, of the screen you're going to see 299 watts currently coming from morton bang from that team callus now in the upper left hand corner of the d category 229 or so there kits in in seventh place from that rider there each one of the categories on screen right now c category just heading on through past buckingham palace in just a moment here d category just leaving that section of the course the time gap's still pretty big at this point. They're still only on the first lap, though. And uh, 165, 160 beats per minute. All of them right around that threshold or so effort. So I don't think anybody's really been put on the back foot just yet. Uh, 253 back to the C category. 542 to the Bs and 9 minutes, almost 9 minutes back to the As. Each one of the categories have brought back about a minute. The D category is really hammering, though. Between them and that C category, it's I think the C category have their work cut out for them this week. But A's, oh my goodness, look at the <laughs> feather power-ups here and the orange numbers. 
this <laughs> is the place where they really can bring back some some time, Alex. Yeah, exactly. But there's n there's not a lot of places on this uh, course where they can actually bring back. There's no leg snapper. There's there's no section where it's really hard. So um, yeah, they just have to pedal to the metal from the beginning basically and go full gas all the way if they want to be able to catch him because it's it's like like you said it's such a huge gap and uh, i'm gonna be surprised to see them catching up to the c's and the and the d's but uh, but we'll see uh, like um, anything is possible with the the quality of riders that's in the in the a group i mean with 78 of the strongest riders out there gavin Demps are heading to the front i think you're not going to see less then 5.3, 5.5 watts per kilogram at the front end of this race. Dempster now 4.6, backing off, letting somebody else to take over. In the A category, also, there is there is a reality of how incredibly difficult it is because you're pushing at such a high pace at the front and the speeds get so high that when you do back off, if you back off to like, like if you put in too much of an effort and you have to back off to like two to three watts per kilogram, you can find yourself at the back of like its 70th place very quickly and having to fight actually to get to the front. This is, I mean, really the kind of speeds at the front here can be really hard to manage actually. And, um, you know, it, it it's really is the, the, the highest level of racing actually for this A category. But that's the cool thing about this is that the D's and the C's and the B's all racing against them. And, you know, there's also probably that same reality in the D category or in the C category that the speed's similar uh, coming on through at the front. This is going to be an over category effort at the front. You can see at the front end of this D category here, pushing 4.2 and then backing off to 2.5 to just sit in. So it's uh, same across all the categories. You know, we'd say this, it doesn't, what is, it's the Le Mans, the Le Mans thing. It doesn't get any easier. You just get faster, right? Exactly, and I'm surprised to see that Conley he uh, insists on staying out there because I, I I would have thought it's much better strategy to just just go back to the, to the group and try to push the tempo in the group because he's not going to be able to stay out there alone for the entirety of the race. So uh, I was surprised to see how spread out the D category was uh, compared to the women's race we saw before. They were a lot more organized than uh, these Ds are, but uh, it looks like they're bunching back together and um, yeah, it's going to be now and ever if they want to be able to work together and. Uh, keep the others behind yeah there's already some pretty big gaps actually within the d category uh from what i can see interesting to see that they have uh broken apart so much here at this point and uh, we'll have to see if they can bring it back together but uh we're seeing gaps of up to 50 seconds or so between some of the main groups out here out on course for this d category now uh for those that are in the race officially from what we can see on zoopower.com right now uh we're seeing around 2.8 to 3.1 now these uh averages will most likely come down as the starts are very fast in these categories and uh it is about what they are holding throughout the duration of the race for their category limits here but 11.5 kilometers completed it is only a 29 kilometer race so with that much distance already completed the a's like you were saying there's not a lot to work with here they have to be all in from the start here it looks like i mean it's essentially a sprint to the finish from the go it's gonna be a 50 plus average for for the a's and maybe even for the b's i would imagine with such a big group and just because this, just because of the nature of the uh, course and the profile is so flat, there's just no, there's no place on the route on the on the course where you can actually just put in like a minute on the C or the B from, from the A's. So um, yeah, it's uh, full throttle from the beginning to the end if they want to be just have a chance to catch. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely um, so difficult, it looks like, for the A's here at this point. But it does look like they're putting in the effort at this point. I'm looking at the feed here from the A's out for, for me. And at the front end, we're seeing 54, 53 kilometers per hour steady here. And uh, that is even on some of the uphill sections. So like you said, 50 plus kilometer per hour average. 7.7 .7 kilometers in, it looks like, so far for that A category. B category, 454 back here at this point. They brought back two minutes so far. The A category is brought back almost three minutes, actually, over seven kilometers. I mean, that is a huge <laughs> amount of time. So, you know, we said that it's a lot, you know, there's not a lot of distance to work with, but they are showing us how much they can they can do in such a short amount of, amount of distance, actually. If it's really 29 kilometers or so, looking at seven, 
times three. I mean, you're looking at the ability to maybe make this happen here with how much time to bring you back in such a short period of time here. So A's and B's now, we're looking at the B category though with Siasco though, out of Poland. Now, 3.7 watts per kilogram, 100 RPMs. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Swift, just tune it in for the first time, upper left-hand corner. That's the current watts of the rider that we are looking at on course right now. Uh, the RPMs in the upper left-hand corner as well, that's actually what they're spinning on the bicycle. 162 beats per minute is what this rider is putting out for our heart rate right now. On the right-hand side, you can see the current watts per kilogram, 4.1, 4.0 as this rider maybe is attempting to make their way toward the front amongst the 50 riders that they are uh, in here right now. 441, the C category as you can see here, 220 is the distance between, or the time between them and that D category. 13 kilometers in for the D category, 11.4 in, so it's about a kilometer and a half up to that D category at this point. The C's only bringing back 45 seconds at this point, so looks like they're struggling a little bit compared to the B and the A category to really bring back any time. I wonder if that has something to do with how flat this course is and that there isn't that big of a difference between the Ds and the Cs when it comes to raw power and raw speed out on course. Now they are bringing some of the Ds that fell off and maybe the D category is just a little extra fast this week. I would also imagine that some of the heavier guys are in C and D like, um, and, and they can still push uh, power, but uh, they just don't have the watch per kilo like the A's and the Bs. But on a flat course like this, Sometimes you see C and D is actually putting out some decent uh, speed. Yeah, I think that that's 100% uh, correct there. You know, when you would know that well, I would think, you know, that there is a reality of some raw wattage when it comes to speed. That watts per kilogram that matters a lot more on climbs. It matters also for, the, you know, the differences for a flat, but, but not quite as much as it does on the uphills. And so with some of this raw wattage here, the speeds can still be pretty high on this flatter course, but it's interesting to see how much it matters though in the A category. And there's also the reality of the Zwift genre of racing, that how much watts per kilogram is rewarded out on Zwift uh, can be different than in real life as well. And so it kind of makes its own um, discipline of cycling, like kind of like in cyclocross where or, or, or mountain biking, or when you compare all the different genres, that uh, there is a big difference in what is rewarded and what kind of tactics are rewarded uh, in the way that you use your power out on a course. Exactly, and I would all actually already categorize e-cycling as a, another discipline within the, the, the tree of cycling, like uh, cyclocross, uh, mountain bike, and track. I think e-cycling is already there, and it's just gonna keep growing and become more uh, a bigger part of the of the whole cycling community. 100%, 100%. Now we are seeing uh, Bex Remington in the uh, in the chat. Actually, good to see her over on Facebook. Shout out to Bex Remington. Solid result there coming from Bex, and I believe she was able to take down the win in the last race. Actually, and uh, she was one of the Zwift Try uh, Zwift. Tri Academy, uh, I believe, a finalist as well, going to Kona, if I'm not incorrect there, and it's great to see her jumping in to the uh, broadcast as well as into the races out here. That's one of the cool things as well is that we have all of these personalities out there in the world of Zwift able to come together and race each other, race in the community. You can jump in with someone like Martin Bang here who's putting out 7.1 <laughs> watts wow. per kilogram or Bex Remington who's taking over in the you know in, in, in the Zwift Tri Academy and getting some amazing results there through the world of Zwift I mean it's so cool that the community can all come together race each other and that on this day Alex anybody can win exactly like this race is very unique in that in that sense that anybody can win and that's kind of when I when I'm rooting for the the D's and, and the C's, which you don't see that much of. But like, just speaking of personalities, like um, with the whole esports thing and, and, and Swift racing in general, there's so many cool personalities. And, and when we get to know them even more, uh, if when when esports maybe grows a little bit and you start to know these guys like Bang and, and some of the other big riders, uh, then you can actually see some cool personalities. And that's just gonna uh, the, sp the sport grow even further. Yeah, 100%. That's one of the coolest things about it is getting to know each one of the riders out here and the stories that come along with the 
efforts that they're putting out to get these kinds of uh, results, these kinds of powers out on course here. But 557, we're already in right around that six to five, five to six minute marker here for this A category. I'm seeing Michael Schwartz as well over in one of the chats here from Team Dropouts. Great to see Michael Schwartz. We saw him yesterday in the Hino Cup. He's saying he's thankful actually for being sick today and not doing this event as a 10 minute gap is brutal. And he knows that this A category is going to be extremely motivated to bring in that back. Good to see you there, Michael Schwartz and the Team Dropouts, one of the more creative names for the teams. Now, that's something that we didn't talk a whole lot about in the last race for the ladies race, as well as much during any of the broadcast today. Some of the newer viewers might be like, wait a second, there's teams out on Zwift? And why does that matter? Isn't it just people pushing out watts? And you know, the reality of working together and the tactics and, uh, and, and how this, even a team mentality can motivate you. How many times I've seen in the Facebook groups and the different um, hosts that I've seen within the team's groups out there that have encouraged each other and driven each other on. I mean, coming from Danish bike riders, I mean, have you found more motivation, Alex, just from having that online community to push you on Zwift? Definitely, and that, and I see that across all the categories. Uh, like, I'm, I'm part of the A and B race team on Danish bike riders, but also part of the bigger community. So you see a lot of encouragement for C and D riders just to get on and just to do a, do the first race and, and a lot of help from the community. And then you have the A and the Bs who are taking it really seriously. They're sitting on Discord, they're communicating, they're doing tactics. So it's cool to see different aspects of racing where it's more casual and in, when it's really, really serious, like you see mostly in the A and A plus category. Yeah, that's, uh, that's that's one of my favorite things as well as to see uh, all the motivation between the teams and how much they encourage each other on, you know, being involved with Swift from the early days and how the teams, it was interesting to see how the teams kind of organically, the reality of like cycling is social and, and that whole idea of having a team to work with and encourage each other on. Um, early on, we started to see teams already in the names of riders, even in the beta. Um, of Zwift all the way back in 2015 and now seeing how that's organically grown into this uh, reality of team esports and competing with each other and competing um, you know to push each other on and then you know working together out on on Zwift and the reality of how um, the program brings each one of these teams out to together in races like this is, is just been absolutely awesome uh, now we are seeing here in this quad view you can kind of see where each one of the categories is at at this point, the D category still has a solid gap here at this point from what I can see um, as they head on through onto their second lap. They're just starting their second lap out on Greater London Flat as they head toward the palace here out on the, the red section of the course here. And D category 271 watts, 188 beats per minute coming from Conley here still though. Um, hammered away. C category just heading into their second lap in just a second here. Now, uh, they did take the right-hand turn on to the straightaway, and then it is going to B's and the, and the A's. Still with quite a bit of distance to make up here at this point, as they're going to have uh, a little bit of a climb in just a second here, and then heading on to their second lap. So, uh, But the C category, they've almost got... They're on the same section, of course, though, as those Ds. So they've got a little bit of motivation. We were saying that perhaps the D category was going to walk away from the Cs today, but now that they're on the same section of the course, and if anybody in that C category is watching the broadcast, they're going to know that they are. And uh, there's going to be a little more motivation to start bringing this back here. They're almost within sight. And uh, D's got to start to step it up as they take that 180 turn, slow on down, and then kick out of that corner. Their 190 beats per minute does look like the rider at the front. Is getting a little motivation, but... Lot of landscape still, a full lap almost to go, and uh, I think the season gonna be bringing them back, Alex. Yeah, and and it helps so much when you have that uh, the visual uh, when you can actually see um, the other guys in front of you, like uh, having a little rep in front of you to chase. Um, that's that's essential. Like it's the same on the road when you on a long straight road uh, and you have the breakaway in front of you. Like it's so much easier to catch them back, and if you're on windy roads and through forest and a lot of turns. So uh, as soon as you have visual contact it just makes it so much easier and motivates the peloton a lot 
There is the C category on the left hand side of the screen just a moment ago. That's the 105 difference here at this point between the D's and the C's. They just saw their chasers and Conley is like, come on, let's push. Gooding's just sitting out at this point here. We're seeing a 15 second gap back actually to the chase in the D category. So interesting to see. We'll see how long Conley can hold on to this. He may be in for a category upgrade. Big old congratulations to him if he does get that with this kind of effort out here today. Increase in the FTP with the kind of pressure that's been put on him maybe today. H bracket here now, coming out of South Africa. 3.1 watts per kilogram. There's the C category. They've already turned a little bit of a turnaround here at this point. 234 is the difference between the Bs to the Ds, but it's only a minute and a half or so between the Bs and the Cs. I believe this C category is now also going to see the B category go by on the left hand side of their screen here in just a moment because here's the B category and then here's the C's they're about to meet and there it is the B category just going by the C's as you can see as you can see on course here Becker now taking over to the front so there's the difference the A category though where are they A category now just starting their second lap four minutes back Aren't they going to pull this off? We said that 10 minutes was almost too much. The lead in, though, so here's the reality. They've brought it back six minutes, but the lead in was fairly long, right? Like, this lap is not yeah. as long as how long they've been out on course. So they don't have quite as much distance to work with. It isn't the halfway point, really. It's really more of a maybe two-thirds point or something. So landscape's running out here. They still got 346 to bring back. It's still got to be all in, but maybe the A category could make this happen today. But they were under five minutes at 14 and a half, which was the halfway marker. So I do actually start to lean towards the A category because I've seen how much they actually gained on the first half of the race today. So they were under five minutes, and that means I think they can catch the last four and a half uh, on, the, on the last 14 and a half of the, of the 29 kilometer course today. I am hearing that just to sit in, uh, some of the riders are saying they're having to pull 4.5 watts per kilogram to sit in on this pack. I mean, that that that's like, you're not even, some of you are going to be like, I'm not pulling through, I'm just hanging on. I mean, that's the reality of this situation with how fast <laughs> that's this what A I category would do. <laughs> is going. I would definitely <laughs> just sit on as long as I could because this uh, looks like insane pace. And you see Morten Wang, he's like almost constantly in top five and taking his pull he's definitely doing his part i don't think he's the best sprinter so maybe he's just doing this for training and, and actually just trying to catch catch up to the front group we also see a little bit of pull there coming from sam Lindsay, absolutely hammered at the front end of this pack as well coming out of new zealand this is a level 30 racer out on uh, Zwift here and he's got 122 races he actually took a win it looks like back on uh, November 14th was the last race we've seen from him actually in the Dirt Cup series and so be watching out for the innovation innovation always a um, amazing race team that uh, you need to be watching out for out there he's currently uh, sitting in 510th in the race rankings actually in the overall worldwide actually according to ZwiftPower.com he's an elite racer uh, actually out of New Zealand uh, here. Fairweather rider and a full-time paramedic we're hearing. Uh, 2018 Wahoo and Zwift Tour UK Bristol win winner and uh, Zwift team with uh, Wahoo Kicker 18 and a cork power meter. So it sounds like he's also doing some dual recording. Uh, one of the newer things that are part of some of the community races out there. That's pretty cool that they're doing some dual recording to make sure that all the power numbers are correct out there. Lots of the community organizers doing a great job of um, keeping things under wraps here. So uh, watch out for Sam Lindsay, perhaps, though. Innovation, always good in a sprint, I think. And uh, you can get all that information. You know, a lot of the the teams and the riders out there uh, putting some pretty cool stuff up on ZwiftPower.com. So head on over there, check out all the live stats, as well as bits where keeping track of things for these watts per kilogram averages. Bang, now at the front again. You said he's a great climber. He's showing it. 3% uphill gradient, 6.8 watts per kilogram. I mean, 177 beats per minute here, this A category. They are not messing around. 319 is the situation. Here's the Ds. They're out into about the halfway point on this lap here. They've got to really be thinking that C category is coming on fast, though. 
Yeah, and the only two guys that looked like Conley and one more were ahead with 24 seconds in front of the other guys. So they kind of broke away. So they either have to commit fully just to stay away or, or they have to wait. And I think at this point, just commit fully and see if you can uh, stay all the way to the finish. Yeah, we are seeing here in the C category, the little bike lanes on the left and right hand side of or runner lanes they're actually runner lanes out on Zwift excuse me as yes we don't need bike lanes out on Zwift but they'd usually be bike <laughs> lanes perhaps but we need runner lanes out on Zwift so uh the, the C category here Becker making his way to the front same section of a course essentially so you can see the D category here I'm seeing Jamie Blythe actually take over toward the front of the C category good to see the NTR team that is a team we definitely want to give a shout out to they've been involved in a lot of the broadcasts recently and uh doing a great job of staying organized and these categories here so jamie blythe and the rest of the ntr team looks like charlie ryan is out there as well doug summers is out there coming from ntr and uh i'll be watching out there for them if they are able to go to the line uh you know that is a team that is is got a very good sprint very good sprint there's Zwift Club uh, for members out of North Tyneside Riders, CC based in Tynemouth, UK, we're here in actually. So um, good to see uh, the organization for localization as well. It's always cool to see the expression of these local clubs in the world of Zwift as well for the community. It's still uh, quite a big group. Uh, both C and Bs are really huge groups, so they're going to be able to keep the pace high. It looks like uh, the A's are sh at least stretched out. It's probably still a big group, but they are a lot more stretched out. It looks like uh, they're bunched together a bit more in the C and the B. Yeah, and we are seeing, you know, things completely blown apart here in that D category. I think that the C's are going to be able to take advantage of that and have a lot more left in the tank because of it. Uh, you know, there's just going to be a reality that there's so many riders still there to hang on to a wheel with as they do catch a few of the stragglers there in that D category. C's, I think, are confident that they'll catch the D's. Now the question is whether or not they can hold off the B category. I think the catch is just a, actually about to be made for a few that are off the back there in the C category. So things are getting very close here between the B's and the C's now. Uh, with so many riders, though, there's you know it's a very different race here than in the ladies-only race we saw uh, about you know a few about an hour ago or so, where you know the catch just blew things apart right away, and the C category and B category weren't able to really hang out with each other at all. In this situation, we're talking about almost 300 racers all coming together with the C's and the. Uh, in the B category, 100, you know, 100 and well, 200 or so, 250 racers. So, with all those extra bodies to hang on to a draft with, you might have a situation if the B and the C category were together. That is a huge amount of riders actually to try and hold off the the A category. They could find some extra matches and some extra energy to work with with so many riders in their outs. Exactly, exactly. They can they can work together when they when they bunch up, and also they don't have the leg snapper to to kind of break it up. So uh, it's a lot easier for like a D rider to come back to the C and then just sit on in a big group. Uh, and now we see them catching the big the major part of the D group now, and um, then they only have uh, Conley in front, uh, and then yeah, it's just full gas to the line from now on. Yeah, we are seeing a little bit of break actually though in the C category. Interesting to see. You know they're kind of gloves. I think they were expecting. Uh, uh, I think they were expecting the seas to come, and they were, some of them were just uh, just uh, letting off the the front because they knew where they were coming from behind. It looked like. Yeah, it did look like that. So the seas here, they're just giving a little bit of a, a dig. It looks like trying to stay away. Perhaps they are catching some of the main, like you said, of the B category, D category at this point. A couple of seas now going off the front as they do catch this D category. Graham there, it looks like, as well. Go, uh, I'm seeing Cordry here for, from Strava Art. Good to see uh, Cordry out there, but DR Graham, it looks like, here with a 22-second gap now still uh, up to the riders that are off the front. Now, I'm not sure if they're counting the riders at the front end, I believe, of this um, D category any longer, as I believe they may be a little bit over category limits. They may not be registered as well over on ZwiftPower.com, and because of that, we may not see that in the uh, official broadcast uh, groups at the bottom. That is why you are seeing the catch, I believe, being made for the C's at this point. So Jamie Blythe taking, up to taking over toward the front of this C category now. Now sitting in a little bit here as they start to 
mix in with the rest of the Ds here. So uh, now with the B category though, heading through some of the same sections of the course actually. Interesting to see. Here's the B category now. Not too much of a gap. Last time I did check, it was right around uh, 37 seconds now, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there. So 29, 24.9 kilometers in, 25.2 in. It's only about 4K to the finish though. And, and that's not a lot to work with here to bring it back 32 seconds. They're gonna have to really hammer away here with the B category, A's as well. I mean, 117, what's the speed difference is another question though. I'm seeing 42 kilometers per hour here coming from the C category at this point on my feed. In the A category right now, I'm seeing 51 kilometers per hour. 10 kilometer per hour difference, it's still, I mean, they're gonna, it's going to be a sprint to the line, though. I think we may see <laughs> yeah. one of the best situations you can see in a chop race when all the categories yeah, come together <laughs> and sprint it exactly. out with like a little gap. <laughs> but that's what we want to see. That's what like, the chop race is all about. When you see all the groups coming together on the last kilometer, that just makes for the great, great, great racing. And uh, I love to watch that. It's it's so hard to time because it's impossible to know the strength of the different categories. So. Um, like just setting those times up to be to make it all come together like here within, within the last three kilometers, which I do believe that the A's are gonna catch the, the rear end of the front group uh, on, on the last kilometer. It's gonna be exciting to see um, who's gonna go full gas for, for the A. Somebody have to sacrifice themselves uh, and then basically just drop out, just do 500 meter turn in the front and just swing out and, and, and let the other guys catch up to them. Yeah, we are seeing a catch here just being made here. Here's the D category trying to hold off the final little bit that they can, but the C category does look like they are going to be making the catch. There's a little 4% uphill gradient. As you can see, they're heading through here in the C category. There's that catch there of the final Ds now, and this is the only climb that's left out on course. The A category, though, they are just heading into the downhill section of this underground. Just on the other side of this is where that C category is leaving that underground and taking that up hill gradient now a little bit of a downhill after that uphill gradient though and so the difference is not much at all it's a one minute here at this point there's gonna be a right hand turn a couple of little snakes and then a right another right hand turn onto the finish straight for this c category the b category now 22 seconds back the gap is absolutely nothing between each one of these categories they almost have each one of the categories within sights at this point the b category at the front it is going to be auto then bone hill here as well now trying to take over Bowen is in there from Team Fletch. They've almost got the C category within grips here. C category taking a right-hand turn. There's this right-hand turn. B category has that same turn almost within sight. Little 3% uphill gradient here. Now, A category. Now catching a few of the Cs that are starting to fall off. They're on that same uphill gradient sections as well. This is all coming together in the last moments here, like you said. But the sacrifices that have to be made and a lot of times, that's what it's all about. It's about who is willing to make the sacrifices for the rest of the pack and whether or not the pack is going to make this happen. And now at the front here, we can see the rider out of Norway now taking on the aero power of 700 watts, actually, coming from this rider, trying to break away in the last few kilometers here now. We'll see if they can hold on to it here. Here's the B category now, top 25. A couple of little snakes here. There's going to be a right-hand turn a moment here onto the final straight. It looks like it's going to be impossible at this point for the A category to catch up to them. So it's going to be a fight between CB and, and some of the D riders that are still there. But uh, I think the, the Norwegian guy that went off the front was just, he just saw uh, a huge group of B riders coming, storming from behind. And he just thought, I might as well go for it now. This is my last chance before going into the mall uh, and, the, and the final kilometer. Yeah, Dagsvik actually is the one that's off the front here. Some of the B categories that just, now the Bs, the front end of the Bs are making the catch right now. I just saw him up out on the saddle, actually. This is the B category. We're back in the 24th place from the feed here. Here's the C category, the rider that's off the front here. It's going to be Dagsvik. Now it's going to be, uh, it looks like Ugland here now, trying to take over. Now the sprint, it's taking over now with 
the rider out of Norway now. 5.4 watts per kilogram. Up on the side, 192. He backs up a little bit. Not sure if he should go just yet. Now another C category rider with the feather power up here. But the B category is coming on. It's going to come right to the line. It's O'Reilly. O'Reilly's going. 11 watts per kilogram. Orange numbers popping here from the right of Australia. But now again comes Cordery from Strava Art. Now Ooglin trying to go as well. Where's the B category? They're trying to come through, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen because the C category holds off. I thought for sure the Bs would make the chase, but no, Cs hold off to the line. What a result there. Cordry makes it happen as the chop in the last 100 meters in the sprint. I thought Lamb for sure that the Bs... At its best. <laughs> I thought for sure the Bs were going to catch them, but uh, they just went uh, strategically. The Cs just went really early with the sprint, like a kilometer out or so, and uh, that just uh, prevented the Bs from, from catching up to them, and that was quite an exciting finish of the Lamb chop today. Absolutely amazing to see. We are we do a sprint coming through with the A category. It looks like Pod's line maybe from Team Experimental took it in the A category. But in the overall results, we're looking at them right now. And anybody can win. And this is what Chop Racing is all about. C category takes it out against some of the best racers in the world of Zwift. All the best racers, though, D, B, C, A, they all gave everything they could out on course. Gary Caldry, their 40 minutes of absolute effort. Thomas Reinke comes through for Rue Riders in second place. Robert Graham there in third for TBS. Rick Hinson there riding on a tange. Ingo Schogenheimer for Rue Riders out of Germany. Kim Evan Dogsvig, who went early and was unable to hold on to the gap that was uh, formed there, the rider out of Norway. Jamie Blythe there for that NTR team we were talking about. Solid result from them in seventh place. Bastian Zwack there coming through in eighth. David Bull coming through in ninth and it will be Pavel Kovo in 10th place well alex amazing racing you know chop lamb chop racing it's all about the community thanks so much for joining in the broadcast alex we would love having you here we look forward pleasure. to having you on for more of the commentary next week thanks a lot take care yeah cheers alex cheers and uh that was alex rasman multi-time world champion joining us for the lamb chop today now if you want to do some lamb chop racing you can do so later tonight in the america's race uh if you are in that side of the world for a uh, late night race 7 p.m eastern time uh, for the ladies only race at 7.45 p.m. Uh, Eastern time for the open race. Uh, that will not be broadcast, but uh, we definitely have Lamb Chop Racing for all of the hemispheres. So uh, next up for live streaming and broadcast, make sure to tune in on Zwift Community Live next week for some of the Hino Cup and a few of the other races that are going to be broadcast over there. We'll be back next week. Two more races in Lamb Chop on December 12th and then December 19th for this handicap race. As you can see, any category can win, so jump on out there if you're a DC or B category racer. Help out your category and uh, try and get the win in the chop. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and as always, ride on.